news you can use. Welcome to another edition of The Scoop, providing you with news we hope you can use. Uh, I'm Louise Thompson, the Executive Director of Tampa Bay Community Network, tbcn.org on the internet. And my guest today is Beth Fiquet. She is the Executive Director of the Center for Women in Hillsborough County. Welcome. Thank you. Beth, glad so to glad be to be here. here. Um, Beth, why don't you give us a little history of the Center for Women and the kind of services it provides to the community. Okay. Well, the center has a really very interesting history. Um, as an organization, it started in the late 70s, or mid to late 70s, and um, there was a group of uh, volunteers who worked with Helen Gordon Davis, who was really our founder, and uh, was a state representative at the time. And what happened, once she was elected, she said that she kept having women come in to talk with her about a lot of their problems. And um, it, there seemed to be a prevalence of women who were in their 40s who had gotten divorced or, or were divorced, um, or maybe they were widowed. And at that time, again, keeping in <coughs> mind if this was in the 70s, there weren't near as many women working outside the home. So they really hadn't worked um, as an employee and didn't have, or else it had been 20 years earlier. So they were left with the, they got the house, but they got the house payment and, you know, two or three children, and um, they were kind of stuck. So what was happening both in the state level as well as nationally, there was a, movement at that time to develop what were then called displaced homemaker programs, which was to help women who um, not only had the economic issues, but also the emotional issues related to a change in um, basically their marital status or their primary means of support. So um, that was the idea behind establishing the Center for Women. The impetus was to create a displaced homemaker network to get them back in the workforce again and right. get them with the confidence they needed as well. Right, right? and because to move ahead. Don't to not have been working for 20 years, is it's difficult to even think about right. getting back out there. Right, And right. plus being responsible for kids, or maybe those kids, in some cases, had already grown, grown and gone, correct? Well, at the time, and actually uh, the women that uh, we, we still have this same for, uh, source of funding. Mm -hmm. uh, as a legislator, she sponsored the bills to create through the state funding for displaced homemaker network throughout the state. And there probably are about, I guess, about 14 other places in the state. First developed, they were available to people over a certain age and then... 35 and over. Okay, and then it got to be, didn't it, that there were younger women who were getting displaced uh, and they had even younger children? 35 too. and over. Okay. And, uh, and it's not necessarily women, it could be men, but they had lost their major means of financial support due to separation, divorce, widowhood, disability of a spouse, and it also includes individuals who have lost their um, uh, public assistance. We applied to United Way to have basically the same kinds of services, but for women under 35. And so that's now That's provided. how we're do doing it. Now, what are all the services that you provide now? In terms of this, of this population, and we call our program employment services, it's all related to em employment, preparation for employment. Um, we can do, we do individual counseling just in terms of uh, what the person's looking for in terms of a job. Um, we have a number of different workshops that we offer at different locations uh, in the city and in the county and in Plant City um, about, uh, you know, what employers are looking for in terms of behaviors. Uh, a lot of the women that we now see, many have either never worked or um, they've had difficulty keeping jobs. So 
we have workshops, and then we also uh, work with them in terms of how to look for a job, where to look, and help them to find a job. Um, okay, you're saying some of the women that have come do, have never had a job? Some so of them. They're, they they're the younger. they young or, or? They're the younger group. Okay, so you, you might have even an 18-year-old coming out of school mm, or no? Usually in their early 20s, maybe. And they usually were previously married or no? No. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Not anymore. Right. Interesting. Okay, so now, uh, so when they, they can go to these workshops, both and they're held here and all around the camp, or in yeah, another we, place. We usually county. have one in uh, North Tampa at uh, the Family uh, and Children's Resource Center mm -hmm. um, in Plant City at a couple of locations there. And um, uh, we also have uh, some over in East Tampa. So we vary it on the based on the month. Okay. Um, the other service, okay, so now employment service, do they have practice then in, uh, say, resume writing? We do work with women on that. Yes, we do. And, um, and then... Practice job interviews, of, you know, of going through a job interview as a practice. And you have um, employee, you've also brought in, or you, I remember you used to, uh, bring in other companies, outside companies would come in to try to help them get the job. So right. a sort of a, I forgot what the service was called, but an employment uh, we, consulting group or something? Well, we, uh, we contact employers and we actually have a number of employers who are familiar with us and they contact us when they have a job and it's an advantage to them because if we have somebody who they're it would be like they're looking for, we've basically pre-screened a person, so it saves them time. And, and so some of our big corporations in town do that, or bigger employers, or uh, it could be even it, smaller. It's a variety. Pick. Some of them are temp agencies. Some of them are in, uh, different employers in town. Um, they just, you know, they've just had a long history with us. That's fabulous that we have that ability to to bring in people, and you continually are looking for those employers. Exactly, yes. Okay, so. Right. Um, and, and the <clears> women <throat> that we see um, right now, it has changed um, so that we're actually seeing a lot older women from like 55 and up. I want to hear more about that, but we are going to have to take a break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thank you. Change your life. Learn TV and internet video production skills at TVCN in Tampa. Become a skilled video producer quickly and inexpensively. Learn audio, editing, lighting, and camera basics. Produce multi-camera videos for TV, the internet, business, or pleasure. Welcome to my live call-in show on Tampa Bay Community Network. You too can learn to produce and star in your own video programming. Or you can have TBCN staff do it for you. Call TBCN at 813-977-5200 today and change your life. Visit our website at tbcn.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Welcome back to The Scoop, where we're providing you with news we hope you can use. I'm Louise Thompson, Executive Director of the of Tampa Bay Community Network, tbcn.org, and on the internet. And with me is Beth Fiquet, the Executive Director of the Center for Women. Um, Beth, you were before we took the break, you were talking about seeing an, uh, a tremendous amount, or a, a, a increase, higher amount. A significant increase. An increase in women who are older looking for employment. Right. Probably uh, starting in October, we've seen a lot, lot more women from like 55 and up. And there are two groups, really. One are women who have been laid off. Mm -hmm. uh, one example, um, she worked at uh, J.P. Morgan Chase, and her job moved to India. Mm. And um, uh, she came wanting to c c learn to be trained in some other area that there wouldn't be the risk of the job loss. Mm -hmm. And one of the... Who knows what that is anymore. Yeah, right. But, okay. but one of the big areas, of course, is health care. You know, yep. it seems like they're not enough. 
And to make a long story short, um, she was a, she went into, she couldn't wait a long time to get a lengthy training, so she went through a CNA uh, yeah. training program and is now working. And, uh, but... Uh, You're seeing an increase? Mm -hmm. All the way around? Uh, again, of this uh, older population, and then the other women who are coming in are women who receive Social Security, and they're looking for part-time work because of the economy to supplement their Social Security. Uh, and maybe because somebody else in the family has been laid off or mm -hmm. they're trying to support some of that. With this uh, economy the way it is, and I think I just read that uh, the Tampa area, Hillsborough County, is suffering almost close to a 10%. Yes, I read is it. it. Yeah. Um, so are you, are you hopeful of finding jobs for all these people well, or do you have to stop at some point? It's really more difficult. There, We are able to find a few just basic type jobs for folks, but it's not near the um, number of the, uh, the people pitch? who are coming in. Okay. And so it, it's getting very tight and, and we're kind of slowing down on seeing new people because we can't really do a good job with the people we're working with if we just keep adding more people and, we, you know, you'd ha you need to work with individuals. So we're kind of in a crunch in that regard, yes. So yeah. we can hope that people who are watching this, if they do have employment open, that they'll call you. Yes, call that would Center be great. That would be great. Okay, tell me about, y you're doing other things. We uh, are. Family service. Right. Uh, kinds of counseling. Right. Can you explain that to yeah, me? Yeah, the center does many, many things that aren't specific to women, uh, even though that's our name. Um, Family Service Association is a, a long time, actually, um, they were established originally in Hillsborough County in 1907, so they're very old, next to the children's home, I believe, very old organization, and it's kind of morphed through the years, but it, um, the organization in its last capacity provided uh, counseling, individual, family, couples, child, adolescent, adult counseling by professional staff, and um, we also have sliding fee scale. Is this any kind of counseling you might need, or is it specific it, to keeping your family together? Or? Well, it's more like uh, mental health counseling, emotional counseling, targeting people who are what you would call your regular folks who have a situational problem as opposed to a long-standing serious mental illness, but these are more situational adjustment, you know, a change in something that you need to kind of get squared away, okay. depression, anxiety, those kinds of services. Okay. And um, almost 10 years ago, a Family Service Association had some financial problems, and it is funded almost 100% by United Way, but we do take insurance and we, you know, we do have some funds from fees. Um, but uh, to make a long story short, we, at, the, at their board's request, we assumed the responsibility for Family Service Association because it was having uh, such financial difficulties, it was basically going to go away. And it's really the only nonprofit uh, sliding fee scale uh, counseling group for just <coughs> the general population that is not associated with a religious organization. So the only, yes, in in Hillsborough oh County. I mean, even uh, like with Catholic charities, they do counseling, and it is, um, you know, it's not religious based. But from an outsider's perspective, some it's associated with yeah, a religious right, organization. Right. So, so anyway, we have um, we have counseling. We have an office in Brandon, um, which is open four nights a week till eight. Are these called under the Center for Women or is it called Family Services? Well, it is under the Center for Women. Our, our name in Brandon, our name on the building is Family Service Association. Okay. Um, it's like a DBA okay. situation. And uh, we can also see people in Tampa, but we have um, quicker access in Brandon. In our and Brandon. So you have qualified uh, therapists that yes. are on there? Yes. Wow. And we and all do you think you're going to see an increase in that too with the economy and some people being we are we are seeing an increase it's not like just really jumped up but we are seeing more people than than we have been 
And with that program also, we are a provider of um, uh, experience for graduate students at USF in their School of Social Work. Oh, so, so they're it's interning a training, there? Training. Yes, okay. it's a training, and, and we also have our, you know, licensed folks. Um, okay, so, uh, and, and then they do group and individual, correct? It's mostly individual. There's really very little group. The, the things Family Service also does, uh, like community workshops, such as anger management, which is approved by the court because the court orders a lot of people for anger management um, training. And that's a class you, you uh, the Center for Women was very well known for doing mm -hmm. very well. We do it through family service and also parenting for um, when couples are getting divorced and children are involved, they have to participate in, in a, a court approved kind of parenting workshop and we do offer that. Do they all have to? Because I know some folks that could really use that. <laughs> Some of them can I mean, use it know, before they have children. Well, but, yes, yeah. but this, uh, just, this just recently came up where the children were being used um, to take sides. or Right, that or is the whole purpose of the class is to... Try to minimize Do, do not like do that. You know, let, if you're going to fight, fight yourselves. Do not, do not, you know, get the children involved in their own, in the adults' issues. But this isn't always, this is ordered sometimes. When there's a definite problem, the court will step in and say, you guys need this counseling? Well, my understanding was it, it was uh, in every case, but I may okay. not be correct on that. All right. Well, we're going to talk about more of the services for the Center for, uh, from the Center for Women in just a minute. We'll be right back. Please stay tuned. Thank you. And this is Billy when he was a baby. He's so cute. And this was his first school play. And this is Billy's graduation from grammar school. Wait till you see the videos I have. I have so many tapes. Let me find them. No, I can't wait. Wait till you see the potty training we did. Mom, our VCR doesn't work anymore. We can't watch those tapes. Oh. Kathy, now you can watch Billy's potty training video. What do you mean? I had all the tapes transferred to DVD at Tampa Bay Community Network. I didn't have to mail the tapes away, and I got them transferred very quickly. Welcome back to The Scoop, where we're providing news you can use. I'm Louise Thompson from Tampa Bay Community Network, tbcn.org, and with me is Beth Fakay from the Center for Women. Beth, you just explained several of your programs. So what about this, the, the one where you do rehabbing of... Uh, Houses? Yeah. It's a um, senior home improvement program. And SHIP, for SHIP. short. Mm -hmm. And we have had this service uh, since 1980. Mm -hmm. And it's targeting low-income uh, individuals who are homeowners and who are age uh, 60 and over. And what often happens is, of course, as you age, your physical resources lessen. You're less able to do some of the maintenance things that need to be done. You're telling me. <laughs> and your physical resources are less, you know, you're less able mm -hmm. to afford. And so um, we, we kind of started out, and our purpose is, is to, to go in and make repairs. And now, in the past few years, we have funding from the city and the county and from the Area Agency on Aging to do these services. And our funding has shifted somewhat with the governments. So we're now doing more major things like rehab, home rehab, which may be you know, fifty, sixty thousand dollars worth of work to a house as opposed to five thousand dollars. Is this worth. this going to happen on some of these uh, homes that got foreclosed on? Yes. As well. Yes. I mean, so that's some stimulus money coming in, correct? Yes. There, there is a certain. The city actually is designated um, in some of their with some of their fundings uh, at least thirty homes uh, available for nonprofits, and we don't really want to own the home. We just want to do the rehab portion, so we're working with some other nonprofits to make a collaboration, and because they're interested in maybe using the home as part of their uh, residential program, 
Okay. Or in renting it to uh, some other groups or individuals. And to, to, so we're hoping to be able to submit a proposal to uh, the city to do that sort of business. When, when people come to uh, want to access this program, uh, the SHIP program, how do they do that? Do they call the Center for Women? They make an application, or is it the they, city or county? No, no, they, can, they call us. Um, I think at the end, y'all are going to have different phone numbers shown. Right. And so I do have a phone number for the Senior Home Improvement Program, but they can call the center and be transferred over there at the okay. main number. We have a different location for that. But um, we do have um, funds available in, for residents both in the city and in the county to make uh, major repairs. And, and they're available, the funds are available through the government, but they are no interest loans. And if the person uh, plan, you know, remains in the house for at least 12 years following that repair, then it's paid off. So it's really a very much of an advantage. That's uh, really great. Mm -hmm. What about uh, this uh, wonderful, it's not far in my neighbor, from my neighborhood, Center for Girls that has been established up there a few years ago. Right. It? That's all, not quite 10 years old. Mm -hmm. Center for Girls is located at the corner of North Florida and Sly Avenues. Mm -hmm. And uh, we established that to be an after-school program for girls ages 10, and it goes up to 18, but usually the girls come till they're like 14, maybe 15. You okay. know, after that, they, you know, they're big girls then, and they have to move <laughs> on to other things. But um, the Center for Girls is really uh, established so that um, we work with girls. It's not just a recreational program, even though it's fun, but there is a purpose to what we do. And it's run by counseling types as opposed to rec types of staff. Okay. And um, we work on how to make decisions. Um, we teach body education. We, they learn by doing in terms of a different tasks. We have a kitchen show called uh, uh, Chef Girl RD. Get it? Instead of Boy RD? Yeah. Oh, good. And um, maybe we should get them down here and put them on that TV. That would be good. Oh, have let's some think of the, that out. That oh, would yeah. be great. Mm -hmm. And to really shore up their, the girls' self-esteem before we, they hit those, you know, kind of unpleasant teen years when it really drops. Because you're feeling pretty good, 10 or 11. You know, girls feel pretty good. But man, you know, once you hit 14, it's, it's yeah. bad. So it's to really kind of keep that going. And it's a research program. I mean, legitimate outside researchers. And it's been demonstrated consistently since we opened in um, around 2000, the longer a girl and the more a girl participates, the greater she improves in about eight different characteristics. Because we involve the parents and the girls and the staff in evaluating girls every six months. How does the girl get chosen to be um, allowed to go? It's really up to the parents. Um, <clears throat> we have, we probably have some slots right now. We don't have any slots in our summer session. Those have already been taken. There is no charge for the service. It's phenomenal. And, um, and we're open on days that the, the, the schools are, are closed, like through the holidays, through the spring break holidays, teachers' work days, all of those were open all day, and then the other days were open, you know, after school. So they can be dropped off while you're still yes, working. Yes, they are. Can. And that's a good idea because that's when kids get in trouble when they exactly. get old enough. Exactly, between the hours of three yeah. and six. Right. Uh, that's when the most teen pregnancies happen, by the way. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Um, in addition to that, we just have a couple of minutes left, sure. but I know you have a drug program called Project Recovery. We do. And you have an elder link. Can you speak to them for just a Our few Project seconds? Recovery is a gender-specific program just for women, and then elder link, uh, we provide in-home, but they're non-medical services for older adults that, again, would help, to help them to remain independent in their home. This could be things such as uh, working with seniors in service to provide a senior companion to visit with them or working with a, the crisis center to make uh, telephone reassurance calls or we also have respite services uh, that are available through Elderlink. Thank you all for tuning in. Please visit our website www.tbcn.org and tune in to our own channels 
and we'll see you next time. Thank you. News you can use.